So recently, I made a video talking about who I believed was the greatest victim of revisionist history, and that was Kevin Love. And a lot of my viewers actually enjoyed that video, but they asked me what were some other players who I thought had been affected by revisionist history, whether positively or negatively. And just to explain what I mean for a second, I'm talking about a player who was viewed one way during his NBA career and is now viewed in a wildly different light in the years since. I can think of a few examples, and I'm sure you guys can in the comment section as well. So let's get into it. First off is Chris Bosh. Similar to Kevin Love, he was a guy who initially benefited from being the go-to superstar on his own team, as he was a beast on the Toronto Raptors. But once he joined Dwayne Wade and LeBron James in Miami, he went from being the first scoring option to the third scoring option. And he also had to play in a new way that didn't match his ideal style, as he was pushed to the corner perimeter and was relegated to being a spot-up three-point shooter. Before that, he was a guy who really liked to make a play for himself and would sometimes go to work from the post. In this current day, he's seen now as a decent player but wasn't a superstar. He had a limited bag of skills, and in the time he was in Miami, he was the third man out, as it was really just a dynamic duo between LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. But how he was viewed back then was incredibly different, as he was seen as an elite power forward, and he was a guy who averaged roughly 24 points and 10 rebounds before he joined Miami. For goodness sake, he was third in the Eastern Conference in MVP votes, behind only LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, as he was an incredibly skilled and versatile superstar. Another guy who's experienced some revisionist history is actually Dirk Nowitzki. But the thing is, Dirk has actually benefited from the revisionist history. Nowitzki is seen now as a legendary player, as the best power forward of his era behind only Tim Duncan. And a lot of people think he was always a clutch proven winner. But that's not really how he was seen back then. For a while, he was actually called Erk Nowitzki due to the lack of D in his game. His Mavericks choked a 2-0 lead to Wade in the NBA Finals in 2006. And then, his Mavericks choked the first round of the NBA playoffs against the eight-seeded Golden State Warriors in 2007, which is still one of the greatest upsets in postseason history. His Mavericks were making it to the NBA playoffs time and time again with well over 50 wins. They were usually between the first and third seed. So although they had championship expectations, they had been disappointed time and time again. And at a certain point, we just all accepted that they were fool's gold, and that they weren't truly championship caliber. The guy was seen as a talented superstar, but he was also seen as a choker and a defensive liability, and a guy who couldn't lead his team to the promised land when the games mattered the most. And then, he won the championship in 2011, which was one of the greatest postseason runs of all time, which people agreed about then, and they agree about now. But the thing is, people only remember that 2011 championship run, and it's essentially erased everything he ever did before that, and now that is the defining trait of his legacy. Whether it's fair or not, the reality is, he is a product of revisionist history. Another player is Chris Webber. This power forward is seen now as a good player, but his choking kept him from being great as he was a guy who was known for making crucial mistakes in the most crucial moments, going as far back to his days in college. Nowadays, people see him as clearly inferior to Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki, and Kevin Garnett, and usually, he's not even brought up among that class of power forwards. But back then, he was seen as a guy who was genuinely in the conversation for the best power forward in the entire league, between the year 2000 and 2002. He was an MVP candidate as he was the leader of one of the most talented teams in the NBA. He was arguably the most offensively well-rounded big man in the entire league as he could score, he could overpower players, he had a solid jumper, he was a fantastic passer, he handled the ball well in transition, and he was a pretty darn good rebounder as well. In reality, he was the leader of the team that nearly ended the Lakers dynasty. But as we all know, he got screwed in the playoffs. One can only imagine how much his reputation would change today if he had won that championship like he deserved in 2002. Another player is David Robinson. He's seen now as a guy who is clearly inferior to Akeem Olajuwon and Shaquille O'Neal, and he always has been. 
People see him as a choker who was carried to a championship by Tim Duncan. Basically, his entire legacy is seen through the lens of his failure against Hakeem Olajuwon in the 1995 NBA playoffs. Unfortunately, some of those crucial moments have completely overshadowed how he was seen back then. At that time, he had an argument for the title of the best big man in the entire NBA, and the battle between him and Akeem Olajuwon was a legit debate. He regularly led his San Antonio Spurs to 50 or 60 wins for basically a decade straight, but he just needed a bit more help to win a championship. He was seen as possibly the greatest defensive player of his era, and in the 1999 NBA Championship run, he was seen as a co-star to Tim Duncan, as he was a 15 points, 10 rebounds type of guy while being the more impactful defensive player, as he even finished ahead of Tim Duncan in the Defensive Player of the Year voting. And the last guy I have on my list is Isaiah Thomas, who was the leader of the bad boy Detroit Pistons who won back-to-back -back championships in 1989 and in 1990. But unfortunately, Isaiah is seen now as pretty much a asshole. He's seen as a poor sport, and his jealousy of MJ is basically his defining trait. People will say that he was an inefficient scorer, and he was nowhere close to the best players in the entire league. The thing is, my childhood was defined by the VHS tapes that I watched of the games my dad recorded from the 1980s playoffs. I witnessed his skills, I witnessed his greatness, and I became familiar with the way they talked about him during that era. Back then, people thought he was genuinely just one small step behind Magic Johnson and Larry Bird for the title of the best player. He was clutch as hell and he was a leader. He could dominate the game with his scoring or facilitating. The common narrative about him was that he was a very likable guy who was always playing with a smile, but he just played alongside of a bunch of assholes like Bill Lambeer and Rick Mahorn. So now you've heard the guys that I think are the greatest examples of players who were affected by revisionist history. What are some of those players to you? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.